All right, man, peace. You know, brothers, if there's one thing that this Kevin Durant and Golden State Warriors narrative confirms is that you should never, ever in life take a great thing for granted. Whether it's a talent that you have within yourself, whether it's a great or blessed relationship that you have with your significant other or in the workplace or amongst your family members, a friend or what have you, never take a great thing for granted because very few people in life are fortunate enough to come into contact or to encounter something or someone that is truly great. And I do believe that the Golden State Warriors, they took Kevin Durant's greatness for granted. What do I mean by that? It was very obvious to me that Kevin Durant never planned on staying with Golden State for the long term unless they completely blew him away and their interactions with him, not only from a front office perspective, but also from a teammate perspective were seamless. There could not be any hiccups there. And when Kevin Durant, and I said this at the time, I chronicled this on my channel. When Kevin Durant was forced to sit through Bob Myers making a lot of uncomfortable jokes about how Stephen Curry was the preferential child in the Golden State family, that was one of the first and initial and primary nails in the coffin. And Kevin Durant decided to leave that team, as well as Draymond Green going off the handle and just, you know, spewing a whole bunch of vitriol at Kevin Durant which clearly was a manifestation of his own inner insecurities towards KD and how in Draymond's mind, somehow he had recalibrated why Kevin Durant was there as just Kevin Durant looking for a ring and not Golden State needing Kevin Durant. It was a mutual agreement and it was a great business agreement between Golden State and Kevin Durant. They literally fit together perfectly. Because of some bad decisions, both parties are going to suffer because of this. Because KD fit into their system perfectly and they utilized KD perfectly. Everybody was winning with this convention, with this setup, and this business agreement. Kevin Durant was playing better and more proficiently and more efficiently than he had ever played before. Golden State's offense looked better than it had, than it had ever looked. Their defense, when they needed it to be, was better than it had ever been. And they truly were, in the words of Joe Lacob, light years ahead of everyone else. They were planning on, and I, I believe I did a video about this, they were planning on making a run for Giannis a year or so from now but what really screwed up golden state because i do believe that they had a lot of alternative plans on their chalkboard should kd leave what really messed them up was clay thompson going down and kd going down as well as the clippers trading tobias harris to the philadelphia 76ers i believe that that messed up a lot of their alternative plans but once again you never ever take greatness for granted they made a lot of strategic and logistical errors in their handling of kevin durant and they just assumed that because they're Golden State and they're the greatest franchise, they're the greatest organization in the NBA, that he was just going to come back to them. And it doesn't work that way. When you have a beautiful woman, you have to treat her well. You just can't throw money at her and say, look at how rich I am. You should be so happy to be with me. There are other things that you do have to do in a relationship. So anyway, they're going to talk about it and I'm going to chime in. Moving on to an ex-warrior, ex-teammate of Clay's, Kevin Durant. A recent piece for the undefeated, Kendrick Perkins, speaking to our Mark Spears about his former teammate, saying, quote, it was just time for him to leave Golden State. Kendrick Perkins is trying to build up so much clout in the NBA media world off this Kevin Durant narrative. Like, he, he's just all over the place. But I give Kendrick a lot of credit. He speaks his mind. We're taking him for granted. Chris, you are all around that organization. Do you think this is true? You know, from a basketball standpoint, it's impossible to take KD for granted, right? So for three, three years there, he was working 38 and 11 in the playoffs, two, two championships, two NBA finals, MVPs. So he's not taken for granted there. The one thing is, you know, the dynamic is Steph is an impeccable player, impeccable person. He was drafted. Clay was drafted by the Warriors. Draymond drafted by the Warriors. Similar to A Rod and Jeter, yeah, right? Yeah, Both absolutely. incredible Hall of Fame players. No matter what A Rod did, the New York Yankees. Is their guy. So I think that I agree with that analogy totally. That's the perfect analogy for the dichotomy between Stephen Curry and Kevin Durant. And knowing that, it would have behooved the Golden State front office to not make any missteps. That's why that Bob Myers, that faux pas at that second championship celebration, that was pivotal. And that's why I, that's why I kept talking about it. like, dude, how do you stand there on the dais and basically say out loud and outright that Kevin Durant is, is the stepchild that you don't have to be concerned with? Like, what type of joke is that? And I was very quizzical as to why he would say something so stupid until Shannon Sharp says something that I should have thought of from the whole time. It's very obvious that Bob Myers was drunk. Dynamics always there, but the real dialogue is we're always talking about KD as the best player in the league. 
So I don't think he's taken for granted uh, as from a basketball standpoint. But as far as the love, they're going to you know lean towards their guys that they drafted. <laughs> I understand what you're saying, Chris Mellon, but we also have to understand that one of the components of being taken for granted is that people acknowledge your greatness. They know that you're great. They just assume that you feel as fortunate to be with them as they allege to feel fortunate to be associated with you. That's part of that dynamic of being taken for granted. All the things that you're bringing to the table, the person that you're bringing it to is not truly as thankful as they probably should be. And that's why a lot of times people have to depart from a certain convention, whether it's a relationship uh, in the workforce or what have you, so that that other party can gain some some proper context as to what they had so that if they should get it again, they know how to conduct themselves better. Yeah, with them all year. For sure. There's a lot of layers here, okay. as there always are with Kevin. I'd start with this. There was a lot of focus on the Jersey retirement yesterday, the announcement by Joe Lacob. The reason they did that is because there's a huge appreciation for what Kevin accomplished, two finals MVPs, two titles. Right, but dude, let's understand something. The Golden State Warriors front office and their ownership, they already had this as a strategic maneuver should Kevin Durant leave. Because they already know or knew, especially with how the Oklahoma City Thunder decided to handle Kevin Durant's departure, that it's going to be very difficult for OKC to ever allocate a major free agent just because of how they treated Kevin Durant. And that's not even talking about the fact that they're in a small market. Golden State knows that they have to learn from the mistakes of others. And even if their relationship with Kevin Durant ended on a sour note, they have to put up the veneer, the facade of magnanimity so that they can attract other major free agents. They have a lot of plans. This is gonna be a rebuild year for Golden State. They're not planning on winning a championship. If for some reason or by some, by some strategy, late in the season, they sneak into the playoffs and then make a run, then sure, they'll go for it. But their plan is to try to woo Giannis Antetokounmpo away from the Milwaukee Bucks at the end of next season. That's their plan. And I believe I did a video about that a while ago, how Golden State has Giannis in their sights. They really wanted Giannis, or they were planning on bringing KD back for that first year at the Chase Center. They believed that at the very least, he was going to come back and play for that first season in the Chase Center, and then they would let him go and replace him with Giannis, or maybe even with AD, someone of that caliber, so that they could move forward seamlessly. That's why they always brag about how they feel like they're light years ahead of everyone. But once again, when KD went down with the Achilles and Clay went down with the ACL, that fucked up their whole timeline. So now they have to scramble. But either way, once again, the reason why Joe Lacob said we're going to retire Kevin Durant's number as long as I'm the chairman, that's just a gesture to show all the other NBA free agents we're not bitter. We know how to treat you. We understand that this is a business arrangement and we're going to make you as happy as possible while you're here as long as you assist us in accumulating championships because in that way, everyone can make money. And that's all it's about. That is in its own place. The other part is they want to be able to look up and show recruits in free agency from now until the end of time. This is how we treat our players. Absolutely. And no matter how we really feel about you after you leave, we're going to put forth this gesture <laughs> so that we can keep making that money. We will treat you much better than the Thunder did at the end of his tenure there. We will respect the fact that you have the ability to go wherever you want, and we will love you forever for what you did for us. But secondly, and this goes back to exactly what Molly was saying, I was around all year this past season. Not once did I feel like they didn't respect him, didn't appreciate him. Kevin to Bro, I can't let you keep talking after that. Stop. He had a huge blow up with Draymond Green earlier in the season. The dude got called a bitch to his face and was told that the team did not need him to win championships. That's what he was told to his face. So let's not act like the whole season they spent playing cards in the locker room and talking about each other's girlfriends and wives and how much they love being on the team. That's just not the case. There was a huge blow up there and that was the final nail in the coffin and KD deciding to leave. I have no doubt about that because I do believe that they could have convinced KD to stay at least another year into the Chase Center. I believe that he was ready to do that, especially if they would have won the championship this year and everything went seamlessly, especially with Draymond and, and had Bob Myers not made the idiotic comment that he made. I think that they could have convinced him to stay at least another year in preparation for, for making a run at Giannis or Anthony Davis. It is a reminder for everybody that basketball players are human beings just like everybody else. 
and Kevin was looking for uh, fulfillment and validation from all over the place. And his teammates respect the hell out of him for what he accomplished. And, and from my perspective as a media person, there is not a more accessible superstar in the league. If you want to talk about the game, he loved it. I loved being around him, just having casual conversations. But he was always looking for something more. And the saddest part to me on a human level is I'm not sure where he's going to find it. And you talk to people in the organization, and that, that was always their fear. They knew for a long time that he was probably going to leave. And everybody would kind of look around and go, is he really going to be happier somewhere else? And so I hope he finds whatever it is that he's seeking over time. But there's a lot of doubt internally that that, that will be the case. Thank you. Well, let me say this very quickly about KD. KD is representative of a certain type of person, not just a certain type of athlete. Certain people are like that. They're searchers. And they're going to keep wandering around in life until they run out of energy to continue to, to wander around. And you have to have an understanding of that type of person when you come into contact with them. Because if you were to do a psychological profile of a searcher, they tend to be very charismatic. And they also tend to be very disingenuous. So when, once you're able to ascertain that that's the type of person that you're dealing with, now you understand the rapport of, or the dynamic of your relationship with them. You both are out to get something, and when the relationship ends or when it comes to an end, you have to accept that and not have any personal feelings because you should already know what type of person you're interacting with. You're, you're interacting with someone who's very talented, very gifted, but very unsteady, unstable. There's not much that you're going to be able to do to assist them. Make sure that you do right by them. Make sure that they do right by you. And when it's time for them to go, you let them go. KD is a great player, but it was very obvious that, that Golden State, that was not where he felt comfortable. He really wanted to win in OKC. But it was never going to happen there because they never gave him the respect that he thought that he deserved. So now he's going to try to contrive this quote-unquote pseudo-super team of, of quote-unquote woke good friends in Brooklyn. We'll see how things turn out there. I could definitely see that becoming a dumpster fire between himself and Kyrie and <laughs> DeAndre Jordan, who, who can't shoot. I give DeAndre credit, though. He's become a much better free throw shooter, so I have to give him that much credit. But I could see that becoming a dumpster fire relatively quickly. I hope for the best for that team and for that franchise, but Kyrie is someone that I would not trust. I just wouldn't trust him. A great point because I think about it organizationally. What could they have done more? They didn't. They did everything they could have within their power to make him feel happy. I know I've been in a situation in Phoenix where we had a player who was unhappy about how he was perceived around the league, and so we pumped the media people and said, "Hey, you got to write a nice story." But at the end of the day, what are you talking about, me? You talking about Rajah Bell, bro? <laughs> Name some names. Don't just say we had a player. Name names. They're going to perceive you how they perceive you now. It's a different era now. We're not talking about how media people write about you. He's talking about being upset that John 654 right. on Twitter it doesn't like him. Or that, you know, Harry, too real to be true or whatever on Instagram doesn't like him. We don't have control of it as an organization. Like Nick said, if everybody you work with respects you and treats you with that respect and gives you that those accolades and showers you with all the praise, but your ear is over, what about those guys over there? You may never be happy because there's no... Well, I mean, Al Hassan, you're speaking based on what you know. From what those of us who, who pay attention to what is cryptically stated understand, there were some issues in that Warriors locker room. We know that David West alluded to some major issues in the Warriors locker room repeatedly. And eventually, I believe that it's going to come out. I think that Draymond Green is a mentally unstable bully. And he brings a lot of toxicity into the locker room. Yes, he brings a lot of great things as well. But he's definitely mentally unstable. I think that Kevin Durant was and is a mama's boy who constantly needs to be coddled. He constantly needs to be reassured, almost like a beautiful woman with low self-esteem. And then you have Steph Curry, who seems to be very self-assured, but it's probably not very confrontational and probably has issues confronting overly negative people who are just negative for negativity's sake. I don't think that Steph is necessarily scared of anyone in the locker room. I just think that he operates on a different wavelength from a Draymond, and from a KD, and from some of the other guys who probably go back and forth. Or then again, you never know. Maybe Steph Curry was going back and forth with certain guys in the locker room. I doubt it. I doubt it. But you never know. I do believe that eventually a lot of, a lot of these stories are going to come out. 
controls that narrative out there. Well, it's interesting. We're looking right now. This is where, of course, Draymond and KD got into it right across the street here at the Staples Center. And first week of the season, Molly, part of part of the base of that argument was Draymond. KD said that I'm just trying to win the basketball game. At that moment, Draymond Green was supposed to give the ball up to Kevin Durant. That's part of the, you know, that's part of trying to convince someone that you know is thinking about leaving to stay. When things have to go completely right. Golden State believed that KD was going to be just so super thankful for the two championships that he won on their team. That he was just going to try to continue to fit in as opposed to continue to grow. It's very similar to a Kobe Bryant dynamic with Shaq on the Lakers. The difference is that Kobe was drafted by the Lakers and Shaq happened to be the free agent. If you notice, Kobe was the favorite son of the Lakers. Even though they both arrived at the same time and Shaq was clearly the better player and more prominent player in 1996. But they favored Kobe Bryant because he was younger and he was drafted by them. So whoever gets drafted is always going to be treated with greater favor. But, but when you're someone of the ilk, of the caliber of a Kevin Durant... You have to understand, once again, you have to understand his psychological profile and treat him with kid gloves. I mean, to sort of be like, what more do you want from us, right? Like, what, what, we, what we, we changed the way the team plays for you, we cleared everything out for you, we won titles together. All that being said, I do believe that Kevin Durant made a major mistake leaving Golden State. I think that he's going to end up fucking up his own legacy because he had the opportunity, had he stayed, to redeem what occurred this season with the Toronto Raptors and win a championship next year, maybe come back in March or April and make a run in the playoffs with everyone fully healthy and everyone pretty much rested for the season because I don't think that Golden State is going to go super duper hard over the course of this season. As a matter of fact, I could see them if they're six or seven games under 500 by the All-Star break, which I doubt, but you never know. But I could see them if they're six or seven games under 500 at the All-Star break, shutting Steph Curry down with some mystery injury or some, you know, mystery ailment or what have you. I could see that. But if KD had stayed, then they probably would have said, you know what, troops, let's just try to stay above water until March and then we'll see who's healthy and then try to make a run in the playoffs. But once again, I, I just think that KD made a major mistake. You have no idea what type of offense they're going to be running out there in Brooklyn. And do you really want to play your turn, my turn, with that little witch, Kyrie Irving, the dude who takes photographs out there in the forest, who's trying to show you that he is a Luciferian. He is an adherent to the Babylonian Kemetic Mystery School system, or as he refers to it, the Hermetic Brotherhood. And, you know, it's so interesting. I'll be making a video about this later on. All these pundits on TV trying to call Kyrie crazy. The reason why they call him crazy is not because of his beliefs, but because he came out openly with them. Because most of these people on TV believe the same things. That's how they got... To their positions of prominence in the first place it's just that Kyrie is very transparent about it but once again I just don't see um I don't see KD having the fulfillment in Brooklyn that that he's looking for I think he's looking for a LeBron James going back to Cleveland moment and I don't I don't think that it's going to manifest itself for him in Brooklyn with Kyrie dude like why are you still testing us what more do you want how does how does that play out within a team and players when as these guys say those guys all really respected kd but if he was still looking for more and i don't i was not in the locker room with him so i don't know if that's part of the factor there how does it affect the other teammates as the season goes yeah on? i think a big factor here and i heard you nick talk about towards the end of the playoffs was the the emotional grind that you go through and steve referencing so yeah. you know the the group steph clay and, and draymond and iguodala went five years to the finals right and, and, and kd three so that that emotional roller coaster and all the different things you go through, it wears on you. Even if you love each other, it's just right. a lot of time spent. Uh, you add in the injury, right? So there's a lot of emotional things that go through. It sometimes. And this cat right here, by the way, Chris Mullen, is the greatest shooter in the history of the NBA who was left-handed. If they make a list of the greatest left-handed shooters in the history of the NBA, he's at the very top, Chris Mullen. You get to a point where you just think you need a change. You know, we could all probably sit here and from a basketball standpoint, it's not a better fit, but there are other factors. Like you said, you, sometimes the personal feelings and emotions come into play more than the actual uh, stuff we're looking on the basketball floor. Well, now they're all moving on, and the Warriors have D'Angelo Russell coming in as part of that sign and trade. Let me also say this very quickly before I end this video. Kevin Durant was on record as stating that he could not be recruited and that he was going to go to whoever could offer him the most money. And that clearly was Golden State. 
So I wonder if anyone's going to ask him about that statement that he made because he did say that over the course of this season that he was going to sign with whoever could offer him the most money. But once again, brothers in life, never take greatness for granted. If you come into contact with greatness and that greatness is willing to to associate themselves with you or assist you in any way, shape or form, always be thankful. So peace.